No, no, I want you to push it closer. The, uh, the light bulb burnt out inside of my sculpture uh, about 30 seconds before the presentation started. So much to uh, the building's wonderful work. I went and started unscrewing light bulbs and trying to see if they'd work. Uh, they're not as powerful. So uh, it's wiggling closer to the wall and it uh, have its effect. And then as I was sitting there, my cousin ran over with a box of light bulbs that she bought for me. But that's okay, because we go on, the show goes on. Uh, my name is Yomar Winstab. My traditional name is Cliff Beck. Uh, I come from Tlaok right here. My father is Trent Masu. My mom is Jesse Masu. And i uh, really thankful to have my brother Timmy here, who started us off with a prayer. And my, my beautiful wife, Annika, and our baby, Humis, who's with us as well. And uh, I really want to thank the, the past two artists who spoke. Uh, it was just really beautiful to see such wonderful work being made. I've had the honor of meeting both of you before, but uh, to see the presentation and hear your words was a really wonderful thing. And I'm actually really blessed right now to be working with Marianne's niece, I believe it is her niece, uh, on a project in Victoria. Her niece did this beautiful longhouse design, which I'm transferring onto the front of a cedar house. Marianne was there and her whole family was there painting on this uh, 25 foot longhouse front. Uh, just a couple days ago and it was great to be able to come up here we just finished it uh, on friday or thursday and then worked our way up here and i'm really thankful to be here today and be able to also be able to share my work and marika for for doing such amazing work here in the space and, and everyone who made this uh, event happen today is a really wonderful thing and i'm thankful to all of you and i'm really thankful to be back home because i've been in victoria for so long uh, and to see so many of my family and my friends uh, throughout, you know, the past uh, the past day has been a really wonderful thing. This is one of my works. I just finished uh, my master's in visual arts up at UVic, and I started. And when I started, I came in my undergrad doing traditional carving. I got in with a portfolio. I was carving totem poles and masks, and they said, "That's craft. That's not art." And I said, "What the?" F <laughs> and. And that proceeded with four years of me butting my head and banging my head against the wall uh, in the contemporary art world, trying to say that, no, this is art and this is uh, our laws, this is many things, but, but it is a form of art. And through that time, my art got stranger and stranger, and mum and dad's house got more and more full of works that put question to that, uh, and ended with uh, a large show at UVic uh, where this piece was included. My art started getting quite political as well and talking about oil on the coast, which is a very big thing, uh, especially being in Victoria and the capital of BC. Um, I was involved quite politically with the Assembly of First Nations as a youth rep at the time. So I was really involved in a lot of these conversations and a lot of the work that was being done uh, on our land, not necessarily by our own people. One of it being the Enbridge pipeline in a, in a very large number of pipelines coming to the coast. And this work was uh, somewhat of a direct point to that. Um, Usually, it fills a whole room with the projection that is now only about uh, 10 feet wide. But what it does when people come in and they go, oh, wow, isn't that beautiful? And they kind of get drawn into the light. And I, I was looking at Marianne's work, and I've seen a lot of Marianne's work before, but that kind of draw into this light, and you go kind of fall into the space. And they get up, and they kind of lose themselves into the white wall until they notice that they're looking at an oil barrel totem pole, and they go, oh, what the f that Same feeling, you know, that someone maybe is playing a bit of a trick on them. And, uh, and that trick is something that I don't want to say to put anyone down or to point any fingers, but simply to point out uh, a lack in our knowledge. Something similar that Nicholas and, and Marianne are doing, just pointing out some things that are missed. It was really neat to see the petroglyph being carved into the, into the shore, something I did around UVic. I went and carved petroglyphs back into the sides of buildings with an air compressor until I got caught uh, doing some cultural graffiti, which wasn't very uh, looked upon. Uh, very highly by the university, but at that point, they were already carved in and there wasn't much you can do, so sometimes you have to push a bit harder than, uh, than you think. But this piece here was, was one that Marika came across. Uh, I, I wrote a, a book about my work last year with the help of Annika. And one of these works was, you know, well, there's a half the book was about very political work, and the other half was about the work that I really love to do, which is the work of working with youth and working at home and, and creating um, more cultural objects more loving objects, objects with more heart, with that love that Marianne was talking about. And that's the work that I think really empowers us. That's the work that lifts us all up, but not necessarily when it hangs on the wall. And, and not necessarily when it hangs behind glass or is stuffed behind glass. And that love is still there, but it's so far from our reach. And that 
can really hurt and that can be very difficult to, to have that relationship to an object when the object is no longer within our grasp or even within our homes or within our life. And when I first started carving, I was carving eight kingfisher masks for our tamuk dance, our masu dance. And I carved these masks, and I just assumed that was that. You carve the mask, and you put it on, and you dance it. And, and it actually was Barney Williams. One of the first times I met Uncle Barney, he said, no, you have to bless this mask now. And these masks have to go into a box. They don't get brought out. They, they have a lot of love that goes into them, and you have to look after those. You bring them to life when you dance them. And so instantly, the, the knowledge of what a mask was was different than just an object that you put on. It was part of who you were, and it was part of your family, and you walk by that box in the house, and you can feel that box. And I have never opened that box except for, for a potlatch. That box is, is true and it's alive. There's something inside there. And so when I started carving and started making art, obviously I'm not going to be the one who's going to make a mask for a wall, though I don't have problems with other people who do that. Other people have different histories and different knowledges than I do. But my work had to transform a lot. And somehow I ended up with an oil barrel totem bowl in the backyard of the house. And, uh, but these were to put question in a little bit of simplicity to people who didn't know the history. And my question to Nicholas and... Marianne, about how do you transfer knowledge? How do you share knowledge? How do you say there's so much missing from our history books? There's so much missing from our everyday life that we know. We just assume art is art and people are people, but there's a lot more that goes into it. And how do you explain the importance of a mask? How do you explain the importance of that emotion when you go into a museum and you see our object stuffed behind glass? So I decided I'd make a mask and I'd stuff it behind glass. And in the back there by Simca, there's a mask in a glass box in another glass box. And if you go up to it, I, I actually made a glass box the exact same dimensions of this mask that I carved. And it was a mask that I carved for Timmy to wear so I could take some photographs of him for another project. So Timmy had this relationship to this mask that he put it on. So I re-measured it. I went down to this um, glass shop in Victoria, glass shop. There's Emily's in the back by laughing. Uh, plexiglass shop where I got a box made the exact same dimension. I said, leave the bottom open. I want to put something inside. And then when I come, when you're finished, you can seal it up. So he made the box. He called me down. He said, can you come down? Let's put this object in and we'll seal it up. And I came down with this mask, very new Cholmuth looking mask. And I said, okay, I want to put this in. And he went, you can't put that into a box. This is someone's culture, you know, and this is a non-native fellow. This is someone's culture. You don't just take something from that and you don't just stuff it in a box. And I said, damn right you don't. Yeah, right on, man. You know, like, you got it. Thank God I finally succeeded in making art that actually made sense. And so I started explaining the work. That's the whole point. I'm taking culture, stuffing it in a box. Yeah, sealing the box up. And he was so on board, so he made this mask in a glass box. And I had it at home, and I sent a picture to my mom, and mom said, oh, great. Now we're never going to be able to dance the mask again, are we? And I, my brother came in, and he picked it up, and he went, well, you know, like, there's a box on top. And, and it wasn't really enough at that point. You know, the, when I showed it to people, they went, hmm, a mask on display. And so it's in the back, and actually it's in another glass vitrine. So when you look through the vitrine, you have to look at what's really there inside. And in doing this, you find a lot of people that get offended. A lot of people that don't understand that I'm not putting blame to anyone. You know, the guilt is, isn't really yours to carry. There's a lot of history there that should be learned. There's a lot of knowledge that still needs to be shared, but it's not, it's not guilt we need to walk around with every day. I'm proud of my mum. She's Norwegian and English, and a little bit of Swedish. Uh, maybe, I'm a little, maybe I'm a little ashamed of that Swedish part. <laughs> and, and she stands beside us every day. She's the one teaching my brother New Chalmuth language. She's the one holding the chainsaw so I can carve. She's the one standing by our side. She doesn't stand there in guilt, she stands there in love. And I think Marianne's words are the most important. You know, we need to open our hearts up a little bit more. There's no us and them anymore. You know, we're all here together right now, aren't we? And, and I think the biggest thing that we're missing is those words, Ya'akupsuwa. And when Timmy translates it, it doesn't say, I love you. It says, you're my pain. And when I first heard that, I went, mm, oh, honey, you're my pain. But, you know, I got this little girl over there little baby in Annika's arms. Oh, they went away from Newfoundland for two weeks. Oh man, were they ever my pain. You know, they were just, they were there deep in your heart, that pain, because you love them so much. That pain my mom feels for, our, for her boys when we go away or we go off to college or we go off to university for years and years. And 
Yeah, yeah, Kuksua, I love you. You know, you're my pain inside of me because I love you so much. And I don't make these works to put anyone down or to point fingers or to even point that, that, that one finger in between, the middle one there. It's not for that. It's, it may be out of somewhat of a, a political statement, but it's not out of protest against anyone. It's just out of a, you know, pointing a finger like, hey, you, you missed out on something when you walked by. And uh, though it may be beautiful light on the wall, you know, those oil barrels are actually pretty gross, to be honest. You know, and, and the form that may be created in the end can be, yeah, we can call it beautiful or we can call it art, but what it is, it's a political statement that we've done for generations. You know, masks and dances that were performed before were political statements. Yeah, they were art, and yes, they were, they were many things, but we've always been politicians to some extent. We've always been someone to, to stand up and, and speak. And to hear the two artists that stood up and spoke to me it was, was really inspiring as an artist who's creating work now and an artist that that really is trying to do the same thing. And uh, I'm really thankful to, to know that there's other people that are doing it and doing it so well. So uh, on behalf of my family and on behalf of uh, my family who comes from Tlaoque, I'm really thankful for all of you who came out today. When you say, how do we take the next steps? Well, you've already taken them. You're here, aren't you? And that's a really wonderful thing. So, Kleko, shoot. Thank you.